Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's Rigoletto, which was live from the Gran Teatro de Ceu in Barcelona. The conductor was Ricardo Fritza, the production was done by Monique Wagemakers, the filmographer was Stéphane Lebar, the assistant directors were Zilka Meyer and Albert Estani, the sets were done by Michael Levine, the costumes were done by Sandy Powell and Lorenzo Caprile, the lights were handled by Rainier Tveveke and Cor van den Brink, the dramaturgy was handled by Klaus Bertisch, and the chorus master was Concita Garcia. I was anticipating this particular production of Rigoletto because not only was this Javier Camarena's debut in seeing the role of Il Duca di Mantova, but it also consisted the likes of Carlos Alvarez as Rigoletto, Desiree Rangatore as Gilda, Ketevan Kemoklitze as Madalena, and Ante Yerfunitsa as Sparfucile. I'll get to how they fared much later in this review, but first, my thoughts on the production and costumes. Overall, I did find the entire production to be kind of on the garish side, as we also started off the entire opera with seeing the courtiers in red and with really creepy looking makeup as if they were about to introduce the entire story with just their gestures. And once you think that they're going to put on a smile, they put their hands on their faces and it turns into a frown, as if to say that it's not necessarily a story that's gonna be bright and jolly, but it's gonna be depressing as all get out. And what I've noticed about this entire production is that it kind of functions like a bit of a board game. The entire production seems to convey that it does show a little bit of emptiness in Rigoletto's life, as in he lost his wife and the only family he has is Gilda, and to some extent Giovanna, her nursemaid, and he feels like his entire life is a game. In the first act, it almost feels like he is playing a game of chess with the courtiers as they all wear red and they have this sort of eunuch going on with each other until Count Monterone arrives and he sort of has this position where he has his arms with his fists clenched as if to state that he has the power in the court. And what makes this particular production quite interesting is how Rigoletto continues to mock him before Monterone gives off his curse. In terms of the other costumes, the Duke appears initially wearing red with gold, and underneath all of those fine costumes, he's basically wearing a long sleeve black collared shirt, black pants, and black boots, as if to state that inside the court he can dress all fancily, but outside the court he's sort of like this dark and really mischievous and at the same time kind of menacing figure, as opposed to Gilda's more innocent and naive yet strong-willed nature, which also shows the juxtaposition of how they wear their costumes, with the Duke usually also appearing in black and Gilda appearing in lighter colors a la white. So overall, I did find this particular production of Rigoletto to be not only haunting, but the overall atmosphere that this particular production of Rigoletto provides not only shows Rigoletto's psyche, but it also shows that in his life, it is constantly a game where he has to survive and ultimately he loses in the end. So, not gonna mince words here. The production costumes were rather interesting, but I really have to give it to the costumes for being extremely elegant. And now we get to the singers starting off with Carlos Alvarez as Rigoletto. I have been following this particular dramatic baritone's career for quite some time. He's been very well known in singing a lot of the baritone noble and even the more dramatic baritone roles. And what's so noticeable about him is that he has this dashing appearance on stage, no matter what role he portrays, whether he plays a villain like Iago a father like Rigoletto, or even a debonair like Don Giovanni and Escamillo, 
he manages to also be as versatile as an actor and even as a singer, especially when it comes to singing comic roles like Figaro from Mozart's Le Nozze di Figaro and Sulpice from Donizetti's La Fille de Regiment. And Rigoletto has been one of his signature roles of all time. And what I really love about Carlos Alvarez is that he has a full sounding dramatic baritone voice. And he's also quite versatile as a musician as he was able to sing all of his high notes quite effortlessly. He did an amazing job as always singing Rigoletto and he managed to be a fine singing actor. Yes, there were times that sometimes his acting does seem to be a bit on the stolid side, but when it comes to his overall musicianship and the endurance he has as an overall singing actor, I thought he was able to pull it off wonderfully. He had a magnificent sounding voice, and he had a sturdy stage presence. Then we go to the main reason why I wanted to make this review, and that was to see Javier Camarena singing for the very first time the role of Il Duca di Mantova. And he did not disappoint in the slightest. He exceeded my expectations. What I definitely loved about his portrayal of the Duke is that not only was he able to sing magnificently thanks to his finely tuned lyric tenor voice which just seems to bloom and bloom as his career progresses, but what I really like about him as well is that he was able to embody this role with a sense of virility and at that same time, that devious charm that he was able to emit seeing the role of the Duke. And he is a very charismatic performer. He shows no signs of being bored. He emits a lot of excitement, exuberance, and confidence. And more than anything, his technique is flawless. He managed to portray the role of the Duke so outstandingly that there were times that my jaw dropped. And his high D when it comes to singing Posente Amor Mi Chiama was really well tuned. It was piercing and he managed to do a magnificent job singing the Duke all throughout. Then we go to Desere Rancatore who sang the role of Gilda. And while I thought that she sang everything well, there was a certain type of characteristic that was really obvious in her voice and something that has been omnipresent throughout her career. And it's the fact that at times her voice does tend to have that excessive vibrato and at times it doesn't always have clean attacks on certain notes. And at times the pitch of her voice does tend to be a little bit on the shaky side but that's not to discredit her talents as a singing actress. In fact, there is another facet about Desere Rancatore that she manages to portray very well, and it's the fact that she is a very pretty and glamorous figure on stage. She manages to use her youthful countenance and her girlishness and her talents as a singing actress to her advantage when it comes to singing Gilda, one of the many roles that she has sung for many years. And she did a fine job, not only singing the part, but also be completely involved as an actress. There were times that she was able to be so playful, but there were also times where he definitely felt for her and while I thought she may not have the most beautiful voice ever, I have to give Signora Rancatore loads of credit when it comes to her throwing herself into roles like this. Yes, I would have loved to have a cleaner sounding, silvery, and even a lighter tone a la Hilda Guden, Gianna D'Angelo, Roberta Peters, or even that of, let's say, Rary Grist, but Despite all that, I definitely have to give Desiree Rancatore loads of credit for throwing herself into the role of Gilda very well. 
And she just did a fine job. And not to mention, her chemistry with Javier Camarena's Il Duca de Mantova was extremely palpable. One can tell that these two have been on stage for quite some time, and they also collaborated quite well when it came to singing different roles, like Belmonte in Javier Camarena's case, to Desire Rancatores Constanza, in which they performed these roles a few years ago when they were in Salzburg. And a few little tidbits about Desire Rancatore. She started her professional career as a singer when she was in her late teens with the role of Barbarina. And then in her early 20s, she started to sing a lot more roles in the lyric coloratura soprano repertoire. And much later on in her career, she started to go for the lyrical roles of Violetta Valeri and eventually seeing the likes of Maria Stuarda alternating with Elena Moschuk also in that role. So when all is said and done, while Desire Rancatore might receive some flack for her overly vibrato-y voice and at times her questionable musicianship, I still have to give loads of credit to Desire Rancatore for doing a job well done when it comes to embodying the role of Gilda. Then we go to Sparafucile, sung wonderfully by Ante Yerkunitsa, and he was able to give a haunting quality to this particular role thanks to his signature basso cantante slash profondo voice. He was able to embody Sparafucile with a fair amount of menace and charm, and he did an amazing job bringing this particular anti-villain to life. He was dashing in his own special way, he was darkly charming, and he still managed to be as tall, dark, and handsome as ever. His sister, Madalena, was sung wonderfully by Ketevan Kemoklitz, a mezzo-soprano I deeply admire. And while she may not have the earthier tones and the meatier tones of, let's say, Elena Nikolai, or Margareta Klose, or even that of the other grand dramatic mezzos of the past, especially the likes of, let's say, Ebestignani, or even that of Giulietta Signonato, or Fedora Barbieri, and to some extent Fiorenza Cosotto, or even the plusher tones of Bianca Berini, Mignon Dunn, and Birgitta Fassbender, I still thought that Ketevan Kemoklitz did a fine job singing the role of Madalena. And one thing that is so noticeable about Madame Kemoklitsa is that she knows how to portray glamour wonderfully. She looked really pretty in that light green dress. And she almost looked like a fairy in that particular costume. She looked really lovely. And she managed to act and sing the role of Madalena really well. And she exuded a lot of charisma, exuberance, and beauty. But more than anything, she was able to play on her strengths, and that is definitely the fact that she is a very glamorous figure on stage. She has a lovely figure, and she knew how to portray those strengths to her advantage, while at the same time being a solid musician. Gianfranco Montresor was an equally solid Conte Monterone, with his fine-sounding, lyric-dramatic, baritone voice. However, it doesn't really have that punch when it comes to singing meteor roles like this. However, I still have to give Signor Montresor a lot of credit for his musicianship and for embodying this particular role with a lot of masculinity and at the same time, a good amount of power. Tema Coma Alberts Giovanna was superbly sung and she made the best out of this small role. And we also had such magnificent singing from the likes of Tony Marisol's Smarmi Marulo, Josep Fado's finely tuned Borsa, Xavier Mendoza's handsomely sung Conte Ceprano, Mercedes Gancedo's gorgeous Contessa Ceprano, and Marielle Fontes's finely tuned and wonderfully sung 
page boy. So overall, the singing was well done, and I have to give loads of kudos to Carlos Alvarez and Javier Camarena for a job magnificently done when it comes to singing the role of Rigoletto and the Duke. And of course, a huge kudos to Javier Camarena for a successful debut in the role of the Duke of Mantova. And the conducting done by Ricardo Fritza was solid all throughout. The same thing I can say about the chorus and orchestra of the Gran Teatro del Liceo in Barcelona. So overall, Javier Camarena made a wonderful debut seeing the role of the Duke of Mantova with his superb sounding lyric tenor voice and his great chemistry with Desire Rancatore as Gilda, he stood out as the brightest star. And special kudos also has to go to Carlos Alvarez, Desire Rancatore, Ketevan Kemoklitsa, and Ante Yerkunitsa for jobs superbly done in their respective roles. And what more can I say about these singers? They were all pros. And for those of you who saw this particular production of Rigoletto, what did you think of it? Was there a singer who stood out to you so much aside from Javier Camarena, Carlos Alvarez, or even Desire Rancatore? Did you feel like Javier Camarena was the best performer out of all the soloists? Or did you feel like there was someone who stuck out like a sore thumb? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later for my review of Verdi's Don Carlo, starring Jamie Barton as Eboli at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. So until then, have a great day, everybody.